Good morning, universe. I look substantially dead. <laughs> I'm gonna fix my makeup. Well, I guess that's a little better. <laughs> but look at this hair. That happened. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's a long time since I did this, and by a long time, I mean a week. I don't know. <laughs> but I missed you guys! It's just. substance. substantial. I wish I had like a teleprompter so I don't have to like. read it. I'm still blurry. Let me make my laptop into Is that gonna work? Make do, make do! What is that? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like, ew, it's like hatching. What is that? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like, um, termites. Oh shit. <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! Daddy, there's termites. floor now I swear to god those things were termites and no one believes me I put a thumbtack in the hole so if tomorrow that thumbtack is suddenly gone then <sighs> hasta la vista termito now I have like the creepy crawly feeling <laughs> I am not happy a couple weeks ago, on July 13th, Glee star Corey Monteith was found dead in his Vancouver hotel room at the Fairview Pacific Hotel. Monteith recently checked himself out of rehab back in April. Autopsy found an overdose of heroin and alcohol in his system. This was an overdose and tragic accident. Vancouver Police Department spoke. Spokesman Brian Mo Montague? His name is Montague? <laughs> This was an overdose and tragic accident, Vancouver Police Department spokesman Brian Montague said. I just realized that I'm probably crooked right now, so you're seeing me like this. According to police statements, Corey checked in on July 6th without Leah Michelle. Leah, however, was in Mexico at the time. I guess you could say they're taking R&R from each other. 31-year-old star was seen walking alone back to his hotel room. He was then found dead by one of the staff members after he missed his checkout time. Both Corey's family and Leah asked the media for their privacy in respect of his death. Until recently, girlfriend Leah released her statement on Twitter saying, Thank you all for helping me through this time with your enormous love and support. Corey will forever be in my heart. And yes, you shall, Corey. Yes, you shall. I'm not sad because I'm terrified of bugs right now. But when I was writing this, I was sad. So I wrote, I was sad. So that's the truth. The more you know. YouTube star and makeup guru Talia Castellano lost a battle to cancer at the age of 13 on July 16, just a few days after Monteith's death. Talia had been diagnosed with neuroblastoma. This is why I'm not a doctor. Cancer that develops in the nerve tissue. Though the 13-year-old was cancer-free for about two years, Talia came down with a fever and was bounded for the hospital for six months and was in need of a plate pla pla platelet oh my God. platelet transfusion. <laughs> she was named honorary cover girl after her debut showing on the Ellen show. After the news went mainstream, comedian Ellen DeGeneres posted on Twitter, This year I met a very special girl and today we lost her. 
sending my heart to Talia's family. And then she later added, I'm so sad. Yes, we're all sad for this young teen captured all our hearts. Not only was she pupping out about 200 videos on YouTube, but she was battling this horrifying disease. Kasana had about more or less 750,000 subscribers and 5 million hits on YouTube. And from one YouTuber to the next, when we lose one of our own, it's a very sad day for the YouTube community. Rest in peace, little one. In a related topic, actor Dennis Fernand died on Monday on July 22. He was best known as a mustachioed cop turned actor for his iconic roles in TV series like Law and Order, Crime Story, and Miami Vice. He died at the age 69. <laughs> That's appropriate for him. Farina was born in 1944 in Chicago's Old Town neighborhood. He became a police officer in the late 60s and was soon graduated to detective. He had a long career as a police officer in Chicago, but got into acting through director Michael May. Michael May? Michael Mann. Who used him as a consultant and casted him in the 1981 movie Thief. That role was the gateway to his acting career and led him into shows like Miami Vice. His legacy continues as he landed the role as Detective Joe Fontana on Law & Order. How could we forget about that? In more recent years, Fernanda landed roles as guest stars like Unlucky, the ill-fitted HBO series about horse racing, and had an occasion role on the Fox series New Girl as Papa Miller. Like Monty and Castellano, Dennis will be added to one of the greats who we lost in this year. What if reincarnation really does exist? With death comes birth. And I think everyone knows what big birthday we celebrated this year. My birthday! Whee! out of focus. No! Selena Gomez's 21st birthday? No. But the royal baby birth! Now covering the royal baby birth is like social suicide for young reporters like me. So I'll leave it to CNN and ABC to give you the full coverage. But the royal baby prince George Alexander Louis was born on Monday, July 22. That was when Dennis died. So what if Dennis was reincarnated into the royal baby. <laughs> Weighing in about 8 pounds 6 ounces, baby George arrived at 4.24 a.m. That's a big baby. Ah. Kate and William waited on announcing the news and stayed with the baby before announcing to the public. On the list call was great mama herself, Queen Latifah. Just kidding. Queen Elizabeth II. Then other family members would follow. The couple publicly greeted the press and the crowd outside of their hospital, rocking it with their new baby boy. Ever so fashion icon Kate kept it traditional by rocking the baby blue polka dot dress. She even showed a little bit of after baby bump, something different than Prince William's birth in 1982. British Prime Minister David Cameron said, It is an important moment in the life of our nation, but I suppose, above all, it's a wonderful moment for a warm and loving couple who got a brand new baby boy. Oh, so that's why British people are excited. <laughs> President Obama tweeted, So pleased to congratulate the Duke and the Duchess of Cambridge on the joyous occasion of the birth of their first child. Even Professor Snape tweeted, Dear William and Kate, if William is 100% royal and Princess Kate is 0% royal, will that make your son the half-blood prince? Compared to Princess Diana's pregnancy with Prince William himself, at the time of Willie's birth, granddad Prince Charles was just in time for William's birth and immediately left right after the public showing. He was even said that he was playing squash right before, or whatever British people do in their leisure time. Prince William, on the other hand, was already acting like a hands-on dad. William drove both mom and baby after the birth. Very modern of them. The new family will be staying with Kate's parents in their Berkshire home. The new family are expecting to move into Amner Hall, a 10-bedroom country home. That's a lucky baby. So what if we don't have a monarchy and a fairy tale? story came to life. We had just an amazing birth here in America. Jimmy Fallon and his wife Nancy gave birth to a beautiful baby girl named Winnie. That's my dog's name. On July 23rd. She was 5 pounds and 9 ounces. Woo woo July baby. Take that Britain. Fallon was so cute when he got excited on his Tonight Show when he announced it to the world and showed a twit pic of his new baby girl. Congratulations Fallon. William for entering fatherhood and rest in peace to those who died. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Make sure to subscribe and rate below and I promise I'll get the news on time next time. Pinky promise. Bye! <laughs>
in the YouTube. Obsy wobs wee!